Welcome to this episode of CEO Perspectives, a signature series by the Conference Board. CEO Perspectives are conversations that take an objective, nonpartisan look at a range of subjects that matter most to business leaders. I'm Steve Oblin, the CEO of the Conference Board and the host of this podcast series. And in today's conversation, we're discussing the generations and specifically Generation Alpha, the planet's newest generation. What has shaped their lives so far? In what ways is Gen Alpha like other generations and how are they different? You are listening to CEO Perspectives, a podcast by the Conference Board. Joining me today is nine-year-old Evelyn, a member of Generation Alpha. Welcome, Evelyn. Thank you for letting me. Yeah, so good to have you here. So, uh, Evelyn, you have to tell us a little bit about yourself. What grade are you in in school and what are your favorite classes and so forth? I'm nine years old. I'll be 10 in November. I'm in the fourth grade and... My favorite classes are art, maths, and world orientation. What was that? So math and what? Art. Art, math, and what was the last one? World orientation. World orientation. Yeah, I think we all could use a little world orientation. But math and art both, that's unusual. So you're an artist and a mathematician. Well, I'm not that much of a mathematician, but I, I do like it. Oh, okay. You're not one uh, much of one yet. So, you, you know, you're taking all of these classes, Evelyn, and you're taking all these language classes. You know, what do you think you're going to want to do when you grow up and get out and in the work world? I think I want to be a doctor, singer, actor, or um, a child caretaker slash teacher. Oh, my word. That's a whole list of things. How are you going to decide? I'm not sure. I'm not either. But, you know, as long as you're doing art and math, you know, then being a doctor, you know, being a performer, I mean, it could be anything, right? Yeah. Isn't that fun, though? I mean, you could you could be just about anything that you want to be at this point. That is true. Yeah. And so is that what uh, the other kids in school say, too, that they're they're you know, that they're looking forward to all doing all sorts of different things? Well, most of the children in my class, they don't know what they want to be when they grow up. They don't know? No. Yeah. Oh, why don't they know? It's because, like, they have so many choices that they want to be that they haven't thought about when they were younger. So that leads to that they now don't know what they want to be. Yeah. And that's not really unusual because there's just so many possibilities. Yeah. So now you live in a unique place tell us about where you live i live in belgium but it's it's near to brussels yeah 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 so you live in brussels belgium and that is really unusual there are children all over the world who live in their cities but but you're you're doing this today from brussels but you don't sound like you're from brussels where are your parents from england wow okay so that's where you got you don't have a brussels accent evelyn no i don't no no. So where did you get that accent? I got it from my parents and my grandparents. Yeah. And your grandparents too. So do you get over to England a lot to visit family? Yes. Yeah. And um, is that uh, is that fun for you to do that? The drive isn't that fun. It's a very long way. But seeing my grandparents is fun and my family. Oh, that well... Now, wait a minute. You drive from Brussels to England. How do you do that? Because there's this thing called the English Channel in between. Do you just drive right through the water? Um, no, we take your tunnel. So you go through the you go through the tunnel. Now that that takes a long time, doesn't it? Yeah. Is it scary? No, not really. Oh, because you're used to it, right? Yeah. Because you've done it before. And you've been to a lot of different countries, Evelyn. Yeah. Yeah, maybe share some of the countries that you visited. I've been to Florida, Chicago, California, and Seattle in the U.S. I have been to France, Austria, Slovenia, Italy, Germany, the Netherlands, the U.K., Luxembourg, my favorite. But those are that's a lot of countries for somebody who's just nine years old. My word, that's more than nine countries. So you're you're visiting more than 
a, a new country a year. Yeah, actually. Yeah, actually. And Florida is a foreign nation for most people. You were in Florida recently. Did, you can tell us where you went. I went to Disneyland for my birthday. Oh, my. You must have parents that love you very much if they took you all the way to Disney World for your birthday. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. What was your favorite part? Um, I think Disneyland meeting you and I really like the food, too. Oh, the food. Yeah. What kind of food did you have? Um, I had Benihana. I had food at the Benihana with you. Oh, I really like that food. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was a show, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, I heard that you like Asian food. Is that true? Yes. Now, where did you learn about Asian food? Um, some of my friends that are Asian, and also I learned from YouTube some Asian foods. I really like learning some Asian food cultures. So you've been watching YouTube videos of Asian food? Yes. Oh, so do, are they cooking videos? Yeah. Oh, so you know how to cook Asian food? Have Have you tried it? Um, once I saw someone make chicken, um, Korean um, chicken, which is like double fried. So I asked my dad, can you make this? And oh. then he said, I don't know how to make it, but we can go to a Korean restaurant. And then now he sometimes makes it. Oh, that's terrific. So you like to, not only have you visited all these different countries, you're also trying the food and the cuisine and the culture from those countries, right? Yes. Yeah. And so that's a little different than maybe people of older generations who didn't have a chance to travel much. Right. Yeah, that that is quite true, actually. Yeah. So, OK, so you've been to all of these different countries. So which country did you like the best of all of the countries that you went to? I think Florida. Did you really? Why? Because of Disney World, of course. Yeah, you had yeah. fun. Yeah, that was more of a holiday than it was. Yeah, but that was good, huh? You uh, you got to meet uh, what you did. You see any wildlife in Florida? Um. Yes, I. In Disneyland, um, Disneyland Animal Kingdom, there's like in the beginning a little zoo, and also we went to um, Alligator World. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Yeah, and you didn't wrestle any alligators, did you? <laughs> no, but we saw the largest alligator in Florida. Oh my word! I'm glad that um, I'm glad that that alligator is well fed, so that he's not out running around the highways and and bothering people, right? It's true. Yeah. So, okay, so what, uh, where do you want to travel next? I think uh, somewhere in Asia, I would love to go to Koreatown in Japan or just Japan, Korea, and maybe Malaysia. That, well, that's, those, are, those are far away, though. I know. I know. Is there a tunnel that you can drive through? or No, probably not, huh? You're going to have to fly to those. No. Yeah. Normally, you have to fly. Well, it's normally, you would take a taxi to the airport and then fly. Oh, I didn't think of the taxi to the airport. That's, that's, that's exactly right. Okay, so you want to go to... Now, I heard that you have an interest in Japan. How did you come about having an interest? Well, first it started that I really like cherry blossom trees, and that's where Japan has a lot of them. So, and I really like Japan's food. I learned about it through books and the internet. I started really liking it and wanting to go there one day. So you've tried Japanese food then? Yeah. Have you tried sushi and sashimi? I'm not really a fish person, so no. Oh, well, that's kind of hard to like Japanese food yeah. if you don't like fish, but... Um, <laughs> There are other options. That's good. Okay, so I also heard that you were, is it true that in preparation for your next trip to Japan, you're starting to learn the language? Is that, it, I, can you, are you starting to learn to speak Japanese? Yes, I am. Um, but you are studying multiple languages, right? In addition yes. to English. What are some of the other languages you're um, studying? French and Japanese. That's really it. And and Dutch too, you said earlier, yeah. Yeah, I. But we learn Dutch at school. Okay, so say something to us in Dutch. Hello, ik ben Evelyn. Ik ben negen jaar oud. Oh my word! There's a lot of vowels in that, isn't? Aren't there? Yes. Okay, now say something in French. Comment allez-vous? <laughs> Bonjour, uh, je m'appelle Evelyn. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's very good. I mean, see, so you're nine years old. 
and you know little bits of multiple languages, you know all these cultures, and a lot of that you know because of YouTube videos and the internet, but also your travel. So this is, you know, this is kind of the new generation where you're you have the opportunity to learn not only in person but via the internet. That's very convenient, isn't it? Yes, but I also learn through books. Like right now, I'm <laughs> learning about a book. Over, I'm reading about a book over Arabia. Oh, tell me about that. Um, so in Arabia. The girls get most of the classes except gym class because they get instead of gym, they would get cooking or like house cleaning, something like that. Oh my! So that it's really different there, then, isn't it? Yeah. Now that you didn't have you didn't have that on your travel list. Are you going to go there too? I don't think so. No. No. All right. Well, you've sure got enough uh, enough countries on your on your travel. Now you're almost a decade old. You said you're going to be a decade old soon. And you're part of uh, this generation alpha. Have you ever heard that term before generation alpha? Yes, I have. And so this is the newest generation. What, what do you think they'll name the generation after you? You think maybe beta? Yeah, generation beta. Beta. Yeah, because alpha is, is stands for a and, and beta would maybe it comes after. Oh, yeah, that is true. Yeah. Do you know what language that's in? Oh, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure most people know. It's all Greek to us anyway. So, But you've heard the term Generation Alpha before, huh? Do you talk about the generations at school or with your friends at all? I mostly talk about it at home, not at school. Yeah, and did, and how about with your grandparents? Um, no, because I don't see them much. Well, I do see them, but on a call, yes. Yeah, but when you do see them, you know, that they're a different generation too, aren't they? Yeah, I do talk about it sometimes with them. Yeah, because what do you know what generation they're in? Um, my grandpa is in the, from the silent generation and my grandma is from the baby boomers. Wow, they must be really old then. Actually, my grandma is not that old. My grandpa's the oldest. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's good to know then. So do you now, you know, do you find that that the you know, your grandparents and the older generations think differently than your generation? Yes, I think so. How so? Because they, I think that alpha generation and Gen Z, they grew up with electronics, so they're mostly focused on that, I think. But the older generations, they didn't have it, so they could easily more concentrate and, yeah, think about it better. Yeah, they had to read books to find stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and you can just look at the internet and you can find anything in the world, can't you? Yes. Now you have a brother, an older brother, who's in a different generation than you. What, ge yeah. what generation is he in? Generation Z. Okay, so he's in Generation Z and you're in Generation Alpha. Is he like really different than you? Um, I would think so, yes. Yeah, how is he different? Because supposedly Generation Z is open-minded, creative, and um, like sensitive but i don't think so for my brother maybe for other things but i am completely different i'm very creative and um i'm very open-minded and sensitive so wow but you don't think your brother's sensitive i that might be just you know brothers in general yeah yeah my brother is not open-minded at all you you can't are you kidding me he not open-minded he doesn't listen to you well, no, if he won't, if my dad wants him to try something new or something, then I'll say like, no, 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 it's not going to be good. No, 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 no. Wow. So he's really close minded, but you like to try different things. So is that maybe that's a part of your generation? You're just willing to go along and try new things, huh? Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. I, that's too bad about your brother that maybe he's just giving, didn't need to think he's giving you a hard time. Maybe. Yeah. I, you know, older brothers do that sometimes. So, you know, you've been alive now for almost a decade. I mean, that's, you know, that's a long time. That's getting, you're getting old. I mean, you're almost, it's almost to the end of this generation. You're going to have a new generation. So what are some of the most memorable events of the, you know, that you've seen on television or on the internet? Um, I think the start of COVID and or you could call it the pandemic where children had to stay at home work from school it was he very hectic that's what i'll say oh was it and it's stressful wasn't it yeah 
And did you you had to wear masks and yeah and did and you stayed at home and went to school from home for a while yeah 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 and that's that's different than other generations where they didn't have to do that isn't it yeah that is now did you, when you know did your grandparents or did it at school did they talk about other pan times in the in the world when there were pandemics you know like the Spanish flu or you know I normally ask about my dad about the Spanish flu because that's one of the only ones I know yeah and and how was that different do you think than this pandemic Spanish flu I'm not sure about it too much but I know it was I think more dangerous yeah I think it was too it it, it was uh, more deadly wasn't it so yeah so that so that's better so this time your generation got to experience something that was horrible but at the same time it was a little safer then yeah that is true yeah and do you think that's partially because of the medical technology yeah and so maybe you know maybe in future generations they'll they'll figure all of this out and and we'll never have to do that again that is true yeah so if you're a doctor is that something that maybe you could figure out maybe well you're you're very creative remember <laughs> so maybe you could do it maybe yeah so you know what what are some other things that your generation is or your you know you and your friends you know that you talk about that maybe your parents and your grandparents didn't talk about um well we talk about more like what goes in our class not like around the world a lot we will talk about like the one ukraine because there's like children's news station that's called cavalry it's a dutch one and sometimes we'll listen to it and there'll be like important news in it so sometimes we talk about that wow so that's a, that's in the dutch language yeah yeah so there's a dutch language children's news program and and you've heard about the war in ukraine that way yeah wow and so do so you get all of your news in dutch or do you also get your news in french and english i um listen to uh i read a paper that's called the week junior and that's how i also learn some stuff yeah and what language is that in english that one's in english so you're getting your you're getting your news in multiple languages that's really in impressive do you find one language easier than another to speak and to read yes which which is really English for me. That's the easiest because with Dutch, there are more like well, there's something in Dutch called a trema. It's basically with a letter. There's like two double dots wow. on top, which I find hard to read. Okay, all right. So it's a little harder to read, but you're listening to it anyway on the uh, on the news program. So is it easier to listen to than than to read? I think so. Yes. Yeah. So what are some of the um, what, some of the things that you've that you've read about on the English newspaper or you've heard about um, in the Dutch program? You, you mentioned um, you mentioned the war in Ukraine. Anything else? Um, um, the Queen dying. Oh, yes, of course. And what else? Well, that was a bit earlier, but Donald Trump. Oh, the Donald Trump situation. Oh, my. You, you hear about him, too, all the way over there. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. How about the now there was a coronation recently, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch that? A bit with mom. Oh, did you? And and did you did you enjoy watching that? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that that's a bit of history that happened, you know, right before your very eyes, and you got a chance to witness it. Yeah, it was very nice witnessing it. And that um well, King Charles, he had to wear a very heavy crown. I'm not sure how many pounds it is a lot yeah very heavy so now do you ever wish that you were a princess mm, no not really no how about a queen no no why because i i i already know someone who was, was related to the royal family but um i don't really want to become a like royal member because um it seems very hectic. Yeah, very hectic, very stressful. Yeah? yeah. And you have to wear a heavy crown. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of work. You don't want to do that. Well, that's interesting because, you know, a lot of a lot of now, how about the other kids your age, you know, your classmates? Did they want to be princesses and princes and queens? No, I don't think so. No, they don't either, huh? No. Did they find it too stressful, too? Probably. 
Yeah, probably. Yeah, it is a little stressful. You got to do a lot of, and you have to dress up in those silly clothes. Yeah. Yeah, that's no fun. Now, do you play sports? I do. I do. Jazz, dance, gymnastics, and musical theater. Oh, but no football. No. No. Does your brother play football? No, he used to. Yeah. So tell me about your dance. What do you do? I do. Um, well, for the end of my dance year, well, jazz dance year, I'll do a big show with the whole with the whole school of Jets Academy, and then we do a show, and then that's really it. If you do it again, then you have to learn lines and all those stuff. So how is what? So how would you describe jazz dancing different from other forms? Well, it's because. You will learn different, like tap dancing. Uh -huh. It's mostly with your legs. Jazz dancing, it's with all your body, like ballet. I'm pretty sure it's mostly with your arms. I'm not sure, though. I think it's also both. But ballet is also a lot with partners. Yeah. And so jazz dancing then is it, it involves all parts of your body. So it's a lot. It sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. Is it good exercise? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Is so. Is jazz dancing popular among you, your other friends? No, I don't think so. I think it's more hip hop or oh. ballet. Oh, they're doing hip hop. I think that most of them are doing ballet, though. Oh, ballet. Yeah. Maybe it's because of the outfits. No. Yeah, maybe. You never know. But hip hop. That's interesting. So uh, you you do have friends doing hip hop dancing too? I used to. I'm not sure if they still do it. Yeah, I don't think your grandparents did that, did they? No. No, <laughs> that's something newer, isn't it? Yeah, so that's a that's a difference. So that's another thing that's different between your generations is the you know the music and the dance. Do you do you like specific kinds of music? Well, I actually like the music from the olden times, really. Oh, how old? Like not that old, about. Like early 2000s. Oh, like, so what What kind of music? What kind of songs from the early 2000s? And also like the 1990s and stuff like that. I, I like, um, I'm not sure if it is from the early 2000s, but I like, I like Don't Stop Believing. Oh, yes. that that That's from the olden times. Don't Stop Believing. Yeah. What other ones do you know? Um, I know. Sorry, Miss Jack. Okay. All right. So you're listening to all sorts of music now. Do you do you listen to music? How do you how do you listen to music? How do you um, how do, where's your source? My dad he has an app called Spotify that I oh so you just you're just streaming it then on an app yeah right on your phone um I don't have a phone but my dad or mom's phone oh they let they let you use it and stream it so do you ever listen to the radio yes actually if sometimes on the way to school and if my brother's sick okay sick, then I'll do it because my brother hates music oh he hates music so if he's sick you can listen to it in the car is that what it yeah. But he doesn't let he doesn't like music. No, well, it's certain music he doesn't. What doesn't like. he like? He doesn't like um the most of the songs I like actually. Oh, Do you, that's a generational thing then. Maybe Gen Z likes different music than Gen Alpha. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Well, he's a lot older, you know. So that uh, now you've um you've studied history a little bit in school, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite era to study? It was in the olden time era. I'm not sure when it was, but it was um, in a Belgium, King Leopold. He, yeah. um, he, he enslaved the, the Africans. He said that um, he would protect them, but he, he killed lots of innocent people. He made them slaves and then, and then he would take all the money he, they worked hard for. Oh my word, well, that sounds terrible. I know. So that's a so that's a, a part of the history. That's Belgian history. Any other types of history or p parts of history that you like? About Anna Boleyn, that um, she married King Henry the Eighth, who had six wives, and they thought she was a witch because she had a sick finger. Oh my word! So that's a lot of wives, don't you think? Yes. Do you yes. think they did that regularly in the olden days? I think. They did. Yeah. I'm not sure though. Yeah, that's a little different today, though, huh? Yeah. So, are there any? So, well, you know, when you think about your, you and your friends, what you know, are there any issues that you're more concerned about than maybe some of the older generations? 
I think more of the climate change because, well, the older generations, they made the climate change, but they didn't fix it. So I think the newer generations care more about it. Yeah, well, that, that's certainly yeah. important. So they, they made the mistake and now you're you're going to have to fix it. Is that yeah. is that fair? No, I don't think so. No, it doesn't seem very fair. What are some of the other big issues that you talk about? Um, that China may invade Taiwan, which would be a very bad thing because then America might defend Taiwan and it might become World War Three, which is very bad. Oh, that would be horrible. Yeah, no, we don't need one of those. No, we don't. No, absolutely not. Oh, well, I hope that that really doesn't happen. Now, when you grow up, do you think you'll work in an office? Now, you talked about being a doctor or a performer, or do you think you'll work at, you know, will will your generation work at home more and remote, or will they will they still work in, in their workplaces? I think at home more. At home more? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you ever do you go to well you did school from home so you have you know you have a taste of that in your generation yeah i like um, school from home more because i got to spend more time with my parents oh that's so that, that's so nice and you enjoy time with your parents yeah i bet you they enjoy being with you too i think so um so do you have a favorite movie evelyn I love hard to choose i do like um hairspray the musical or the movie grease Oh, the movie Grease. Now, that's not a new movie, is it? No, it's a very old movie, I'm pretty it's sure. It's a very old movie, yeah. So do you like old movies? Yeah. How about books? Uh, what, do you have a favorite book? Um, I like I like um, the Moomin's books and the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books. Oh, my. Now, have you read Harry Potter? Yeah, I actually have a few books of it, but not a lot. Did you, did you like Harry Potter? Yeah. I, I mostly watch the movies, though. Oh, of course. Yeah. And and did you enjoy the movies? Yeah. Yeah. Because Harry Potter, well, that's getting kind of old now, though. That's different. That's prior generation, right? That's actually true. Yeah. So do your friends watch old movies, too, or do they watch only new movies? I'm pretty sure look, most of them watch new movies. Yeah. Oh, I also like the Avatar movies. Oh, the Avatar movies. Did you see the newest one? Um. Yeah. Avatar to the way of water oh i've heard people say that after watching them it kind of makes them blue have you heard that <laughs> no i actually haven't oh i think I, I that may not be true now what who's this guy i i heard this name is ryan kagi kaji kaji well who's that guy i i heard somebody say that well you tell me so he is um right now a 11 year old boy who started like making videos at two years old and um he opened first presents and how he got it was because he was so young and cute that a lot of little children thought oh look he's unboxing that thing i think i want to ask that to my mommy can i buy that maybe then that company finds out that he's doing that so then they get sponsorships, more sponsorships. Then that company has more money. Then other companies figure that out. So they want to sponsor him. And that's how he grows bigger and bigger. Till this day, his network is worth $100 million. $100 million, And he's 11 years old? Yeah. And he's cute. Well, not that much anymore. Oh, not that much. Okay. Yeah. He used to be cute. But he said, so, so this is a new thing. You know, it's a, he's an influencer and he's 11 years old. He goes on, he tells people what they like and, and boom, he get, wow. Have you tried it? Um, no, I haven't. I've never Would you like it. to? I don't think so. No, sure. because you, you know, you are a performer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You, so you think you could do it? I think I could. Well, a hundred million dollars is worth, or you didn't say dollars, hundred million euro probably yeah. is worth, that's worth trying. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now the, I heard something also about uh, this new game that you like. Um, yes. What's it called? It's called Roadblox. Oh, Roadblox. Okay. So what's Roadblox? Um, it's a game where you can interact with people and play games. You can also find a few educational games, not a lot. Um, in some games, you'll learn you have to spend money, pay bills, stuff like that. 
Oh my! So this uh, these is this an online game? Yeah. Roadblocks. Yeah. Yeah. I play. I play with my brother and my friend. You play with your brother now. I thought your brother didn't. Well, didn't fool around with this stuff. Oh, he does. A lot. Oh, he does. Uh, actually. Oh, Okay. So, so it's it's you know this is not only Gen Alpha. This is Gen Z that Roadblocks yeah. is. Uh, yeah. And and so uh, any other games that you like? Um, I like Minecraft. Minecraft. Now, what's that all about? Um, it's basically like a block game where you build a house, survive, and it's very good because it like actually, if you don't eat food, you will eventually starve. Oh, well, that's good to know. And uh, now this is a virtual world, right? In Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not real. Then these are games that are on the internet and virtual, right? Yeah. And then you were telling me that you learned about Asian food and that was via video. Yeah. Now, do, are, do you also study um, via video? Like, uh, do you take French? Um, I take French via Duolingo and school. Oh, and so that's, that's another um, internet tool, right? Yeah. So you're really doing a lot in, and the internet, you know, wasn't available to prior generations, but it sounds like a lot of your life, whether it's school or music or your streaming or your games or your interactions. Wow. You do a lot on and rely on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. So is, you know, are these virtual worlds fun? Yeah, I think so. And, and are your friends all doing that as well? Not all of my friends. No, just, just some of them, huh? Yeah, some don't have time because they're Christians, so they have to go to church or stuff like that. Have yeah, a lot of a lot of different competing priorities, huh? Yeah. But that's you know that's the same. If you could travel back in time and meet anybody in history, who would you like to meet? Um, John Travolta from Greece because he was one of the main characters in the movie, and I really like that movie. Um. I would go back to the Middle Ages because then they killed a lot of witches. And also I'd go back in time to stop Hitler. Oh, well, that, yes. If you could go back in time and stop some of the evil, that would be awesome. But but interesting. Why did you mention the witches? Did you want to see the riches? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Witches were in her, their day. They would be doctors, nurses. Oh, so they really weren't witches is what you're saying. No, they were actually nurses. So do you want, you said you might want to be a doctor, but are you really saying you want to be a witch? No. No. Oh, okay. But I do like witches. You do like witches. Uh, and do you, do you have a wand that you use, you know, like Harry no, Potter? No, I don't. No, but boy, wouldn't that be fun? That would be fun, actually. Yeah, I think it would. Last question. So when people look back long time from now and they look back on, on your friends and this gen, and your generation and they say, this is the olden times, this generation alpha, what do you think they'll say about your generation? Have you replaced normal cars with, with like auto cars or electric cars? Like have That's what they're going to say? Do you still have oil companies? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so there was, there was all this stuff, this technology, oil companies and cars. What else? Is virtual reality normal for you? Okay. Virtual was normal. Yeah. What else? And are there going to be more male leaders, female leaders? Sorry. So, so a better diversity, more, more women in leadership. Yeah. And is one of them going to be you? Maybe. Maybe. And also, ha, have you seen the first person on Mars? I don't know. Tell me about it. I'm not sure either, actually. Yeah. Well, you know, there's so many things you could do. You could change history, you know. Yeah, that's true. You have your whole life ahead of you. You know, you could, you could think about it. And when they look back, they'll say that, Evelyn, she changed history. Do you want that? No, not really, actually. I don't like, I don't like being a star. No. Well, I guess that that's why you don't want to be a queen or a princess, huh? No. That and the, the fact that the crown's so heavy. Yeah. Yeah, that's just such a, such a burden. Well, Evelyn, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. 
Yeah. And thanks to all of you for listening in to CEO Perspectives. Every week, I'll be joined by a prominent thought leader to provide insights on the issues of our time. We'll cover leading topics in the generations, geopolitics, economics, public policy, and more. Please share CEO Perspectives with everyone, all of your colleagues, your friends, every generation in your family, and a lot from Generation Alpha. I'm Steve Odlin, and this series has been brought to you by the Conference Board. You have been listening to CEO Perspectives, a podcast by the Conference Board.